Today I'll be giving a talk on MLIR query tool. Uh, I've been working on it for the past few months. Uh, before getting started, a really quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Devajit, but you can also call me Dave, as Alexander just mentioned. Uh, I am a compiler engineer intern at Huawei. I'm also an MSc computing student at Cardiff University. And that's the QR code to the project, uh, the GitHub page. You can just scan it or, or click on it if you have the slides. And um, this is just my side project, so I might also write a few blog posts on MLIR query. You can check that out on my website if you want. Um, yeah, uh, brief introduction um, on MLIR query. So what is MLIR query? It's an interactive query tool for MLIR. Uh, if, you have, if any of you have used Clang query before, it's very much similar to Clang query, but for MLIR. And it has a REPL interface, and you can type in any query you want and based on various properties of the MLIR code. And it, it can assist you in debugging and testing in MLIR. I'll show you that in a bit. And it's a standalone tool. So before, uh, so I'll, I'll just get into what MLIR query can do. Here we have a basic queries.mlir file. And if you look inside the file, you have, a, you, have different, you have an imaginary hello dialect with different languages as operation names. For instance, you have hello.french with, uh, with an attribute name bonjour and a few other languages as well. So to, to load this file into MLIR query, you can simply do MLIR query, basic queries.mlir, and it will open up a REPL interface and you can type in any query you want. So here we have has m, which stands for match, uh, like in Clang query. m has op name hello.japanese. It, 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 so it, what, what it means is it matches all the operations that has the op name hello.japanese. Uh, so if you, if you look on the right, we have a few languages. And hello.japanese is on line six, there. And did MLIR query get it right? Yes, it did. It, it says we have a match on line six, and it prints the operation. So you can do the same, same thing for attribute names. Let's say we, uh, we want to find all the, uh, uh, all the operations that has an attribute name hola. And we all know it should match hello.spanish. That's on line seven. MLR query get it right, get, gets it right. There you go. Now we have a slightly different query. Uh, match is constant op. So what this does is it matches all the operations that has a constant trait. So in this case, in this file, we only have a single constant op here, that's C, C, C2, I32, I the constant, and it should match the, that operation. So at this point, you might be thinking, oh, this seems easy. We don't really need a query tool to do this. We can just use our text, use a text search to find all the operations and attribute names. But MLIR query can do more. I'll, I'll show you in a bit. So we have, uh, we have an any of query. So if you have multiple, multiple queries, you can combine them together with, uh, with ra wrapping it around an any of query. So here we have any of has op name hello.english and konnichiwa. So you get, you sh it should match these two operations. And it does. So now let's move on to slightly more advanced queries, and I'll be using a different MLIR file here, uh, nested queries.mlir. And the first query is has argument. So again, we have to load this into the, uh, to load this, you, you have to do MLIR query, nested queries.mlir. Then it opens up a REPL interface again. 
Then here we have match has argument is constant op two. What this means is it matches all the operations that has an argument which is the result of an is constant op at index two. So from the previous slides we know is constant op should match this. And it's used at two places, on line, on line 8 and on line 11. And where is it used at index 2? It should be here. And that should be a match. And it is a match. Matches at line 10, sorry. So you can, you can even go crazier with this. You can nest it twice, thrice, or 100 times, as, as many times as you want. And so from the previous slide, we saw has argument is constant op2 matches this operation. And now it's has argument this thing at index 0. And that should be test.usku. And it matches test.usku. So let's say you want to find all the operation, uh, all the uses of an operation, test.coo. You can simply do uses has op name test.usecoo, and it, go, it checks all the uses of uh, test.coo, and then prints all the operations. You can also do the reverse. You can uh, you can do defined by has op name test.coo. And it checks all the arguments of test.coo and goes back. And then this matches three different op operations. We get three different operations here. So you can go, it doesn't stop there. You can even jump steps. You can jump two steps backward with the get definitions query. You can say match get definitions has op name test.coo and then jump two steps backward. So here, th this is the first step. From test.coo, you jump one step, and then you jump one. When you jump one more step, these are the arguments. So if you, if you look at these arguments, it doesn't have anywhere else to jump. So it doesn't match anything. But these arguments here can jump here. So these two should be the matches. And, and we have two matches. So, but you might also want to match all the operations along the way. So instead of just matching all the operations at, at step two, you might also want to match all the operations at step one, step two, and, and so on. So you can simply do get all definitions, has op name test.coo two. That, that will match all the all the uh, matches along the way. Yep, and this will be useful for the next feature I'm about to show you. That's function extraction. Uh, this is one of the best features so far, something I see myself using. Uh, so let's say you want to extract all the matches into a function. You can simply do add a dot extract at the end with the function name. So here we have the, all the definitions of has op name test.coo extracted into a function. But the problem here is, if you look at test.coo, useCo, you don't have test.useCo here. And that's not a bug be because the definitions of test.coo can, test cannot be itself. Uh, so maybe we need to change how get all definitions work including zeroth step, one, first step, and, and so on. Or, or maybe we can uh, have a way around it with an any of query we, we've seen previously. We can, you can just do any of test.coo and all the definitions of test.coo. That should match both. So if you, if you look at the result, we have test.useCo here as well. And this, this might be useful if you want to develop test cases for example, and you, you don't have to write it manually now. You can just make a query and then add a dot, just pop a dot extract at the end, and then you get a function extract for you. 
So I, I promise you I won't bore you with all the implementation details, but I'll give you a very, very rough overview of how the code is structured. So currently we have matches. So it's, we have three main components. We have matches, the parser, and the registry. So matches are already existing in MLAR. We have like the M constant matcher, which matches all the operations that has a constant rate. And we, we have a few other matches in MLA. There, there, are a, there are quite a few. And a few match, I, I've upstreamed a few matches as a part of my work on MLA query. And there are some additional matches that still need to be upstreamed. And then there comes the parser, which is the parser for MLA query, not the parser for MLA itself. So it parses the query input. And then uh, it catches errors for failed queries. Um, yeah, it, and, and the, it, is, uh, it is inspired from Clang query, the parser. So, and then there's a registry, and the registry is what maps the uh, MLAR queries with the matches we have in MLAR. So, the is constant query I've shown you actually maps to M constant matcher in the in the MLIR code base. So now, uh, what's upcoming? So I, I got accepted to the Google Summer of Code this, code this year, GSOC, so and the work I'll be doing will be part of GSOC. So we, we uh, there need to be an autocomplete binding values history, all the, all the features Clang query already has. And then there needs to be more more matches to support all, all possible queries. And then currently the code is not not quite clean. I have debug prints everywhere, and it's it's not very clean. So I, I need to clean it up, uh, add some test cases, optimize. And after all that, the aim is to send a patch upstream. And yeah. And before wrapping up, uh, big thanks to Jack for patiently responding to all my emails and uh, helping me throughout, throughout my work on ML query. And to my colleagues at Huawei, they're here, for uh, helping me and having a dry run. And to you all for listening to me for the past 15 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, or, or anything else you want to throw at me, feel free. Uh, thank you. That sounds really cool work, and uh, it's great to hear that you're going to be continuing to upstream it. Uh, do we have any questions? Because uh, otherwise, I have one, which is, do you think that this could be usefully integrated with like the pass infrastructure in MLIA, right? Like, um, print before, print after, that kind of thing. Like, do you think there would be an opportunity here to add integration with MLIA query to sort of get more useful output, especially when you're compiling non-trivial programs? Uh, I'm sorry, printing what? Like, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the pass infrastructure, right? But you have like these print IR before, after um, pass, uh, things for passes, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is like, if you're debugging anything that isn't a trivial toy program, that just like, you know, dumps like seven console history's worth of IR at you. And so do you think there would be an opportunity to integrate MLIR query there, right? So you can be like, dump the IR, but then please run MLIR query so I only see the relevant parts. Mm, I'm, I'm not really sure, maybe, uh, I, I, I really don't know, I'm sorry. No, cool, I mean, they can probably hack something together with piping. <laughs> mm, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think that's a very good question and a very good remark, very interesting. Um, are you familiar with PDL? I'm sorry? Uh, are, are you familiar with PDL? Yeah, uh, well, I actually looked at the code base for PDL before starting my work on MLIR query. Then I, I wasn't very familiar with MLIR, and I found it uh, a bit hard to understand, so I started working on MLIR query. But now when I look at PDL, I think some parts can be done, can be reused. I'm, I'm really not sure. I should probably look into it more. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, MLR, I mean, MLR query has a nice syntax. Uh, that, that's very convenient. And, and for things like Alexander mentioned, all, all that kind of tooling, that seems like a good fit. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if MLR query should generate PDL. 
actually, and use PL as an engine under the hood. Mm. But thoughts? Maybe you should look into it or ask Jacques about it. What do you think? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ooh, I think we have some interesting topics to discuss over lunch. Um, but yeah, that sounds really fun. <laughs> I want to say uh, let's thank our speaker, let's thank all the speakers, and then...